Hello, every folks, and happy Halloween! Oh, uh, so, I figured what better place to go for a Halloween special than Palace of the Dead, and so we're gonna be raiding all of the different versions of Palace of the Dead throughout the Tactics Ogre games, because the Ogre Battle games didn't really technically have one, um, and we're basically gonna be uh, going and raiding them on five different categories. These are gonna be Trick, Treat, Spook, as well as your ability to be back by midnight, and their soul for getting down. So the trick is going to be the challenge of the place, how good of a challenge it was, uh, not necessarily was it impossible to beat, but just is it a good challenge? Um, treat, in terms of how often you're getting rewarded for doing good. Uh, spook, uh, which is how cool the enemy variety is. Uh, your ability to be back by midnight and your soul for getting down, which is the music. So, let's go ahead and start off with the soundtracks. Now, when it comes to the old classic soundtracks, look, <laughs> uh, between all the different selections on this list, um... <laughs> I personally got to give that one to Reborn. I just really love the uh, the kind of uh, better rendition of the Fog of Phantom theme. I think part of it is just that I've heard it so freaking many times at this point that, like, you just hearing a different version definitely uh, kind of speaks to me there. Um, in second place for that one, I'm going to have to put the PSP version because it's the one that we're listening to right now. It's the one that we've all heard a million times and probably dread hearing every time it comes up because we know how many maps have this dang theme. Um, from there, uh, since One Vision's going to be using the same soundtrack, I mean, it's basically in the same spot. Um, and then from there, we have FFT with its, uh, uh, with its Deep Dungeon theme. Now, the thing is, with the Deep Dungeon music, it's not bad. Um, it's, ju it's just kind of quiet. So I, I really like the sort of chill vibes there. In fact, actually, I'm kind of tempted to put that way up here, uh, right next to Reborn here, because I think I probably would listen to, <laughs> to the, uh, the Deep Dungeon themes a bit more than, uh, uh, than these other ones if I had a choice. And then finally, at the bottom, we have the absolutely atrocious drone of <laughs> the Fog of Phantom theme from the Classic Tactics Ogres. Now, here's the thing. The theme is good. The composition is good. It's just that... I mean, like, the the the, uh, the one you hear on Saturn is okay. The one on uh, the, P the uh, PS1 version just has all those little tink noises throughout it all the time, which just gives you a headache over time. And then you got the SNES version that's just sort of okay, but then you realize you can't save in the middle of fights, and then it's just dreadful from there. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue on. So, next category here is going to be your ability to be back by midnight. How long does it take uh, for you to actually get somewhere? Also, I just noticed I forgot to, uh, to include Night of Lotus. Hold on. I put Night of Lotus over here, right, in, right next to those other ones. Um, it doesn't really have a particularly unique theme for that area. It just kind of uses the spooky theme. Um, I'll probably listen to that over Night of Lotus's version for this particular thing. Um, anyway, yeah, for those that didn't know, Night of Lotus technically has Palace of the Dead. Exactly one map of it. <laughs> and, and, and it's funny because it's actually going to get rated pretty darn highly for it. So, speaking of, the very first uh, spot over here on your ability to be back by midnight is going to be Night of Lotus. Simply put, it has one map with all of the rewards in it, and it's j fairly quick and straightforward to actually complete. If you want to guarantee your loot every time you go through there, well, <laughs> you just simply uh, pop on in and uh, throw in, uh, it, kind of uh, throw yourself into quest mode, go on to that uh, Palace of the Dead. Um, I think it's like, what is it, Tundra Geology or whatever it's called? <laughs> it keeps going on all kinds of various uh, wordplay puns as you go through the different books. Um, but yeah, the very final level is just a Palace of the Dead level. Um, and uh, yeah, you get some of the uh, highest tier rewards of the entire game there. Uh, up to three drops for each one, which is actually quite up there in terms of reward. Um, in fact, actually, I <laughs> just to kind of put this up there... Uh, okay, we're going we're gonna to get to the reward section later. Okay, let's go back to that Back by Midnight factor. Alright, next on that list has to be FFT. Like, mi the... Um, uh, the, uh, the Deep Dungeon, it's not exactly as crazy long as Palace of the Dead. Remember, Deep Dungeon, 15 floors. All these other ones, up to 115. <laughs> so, that's, uh, a little bit of a rough time. Um, from there, we've got, uh, Classic Tactics Ogre coming in at a modest 100 floors, though... Uh, I'm gonna say we're actually... I think Tactics Ogre PSP was a little faster in that regard, uh, considering that you can uh, you can employ several shortcuts, and you probably want to get out there out of there as, short, as kind of quickly as possible. So you can't... Here's the thing. I don't know for 100% certain which one's gonna be faster. I recently went through all of them for this video, and I still honestly can't tell which is going to be faster, because sometimes you get stuck 
on maps in Tactics Ogre Classic, going and redoing the same stuff over and over and over, waiting for your people to get revived, or just waiting for that one last enemy to, uh, to get killed off or whatever else. So oftentimes you're sitting and waiting, even though the maps are usually not very big. If they are one of the bigger maps, you are gonna be there for ages. Um, whereas on PSP, they're typically going to be set, and they're typically going to be... Uh, uh, they're, they're typically going to be uh, a, a decent bit more predictable, I guess you could say. Um, oftentimes you can use a, a good bit more tricks at your disposal to get through them. Um, anyway, so, okay, we'll, we'll get to this little switcheroo here in a moment, but I feel like it's probably on the slower end because of how long it takes for MP to recharge sometimes, uh, not to mention the slow animations. Now, between One Vision and Tactics Ogre PSP, um, I would probably expect to finish PSP sooner, just because you could go uh, run full overpowered longbows and just kind of turbo shoot your way throughout the entire thing. Um, whereas in One Vision, oftentimes you're going to have a legit fight on pretty much every single floor on the way down. So yeah, there's that. Um, you can't necessarily get as busted in One Vision. Anyway, that being said, though, uh, between both of them, I would say you probably are completing Reborn a good bit faster than either of them. <laughs> uh, not only do you get to uh, use your shortcuts on any repeat playthroughs, whether or not you did the story stuff for it or not, um, but additionally, uh, just fights in general tend to go a decent bit faster, so I would say it goes about there. So it's probably third place as far as speed goes. All right, next is going to be Spook Factor, so just overall enemy coolness. Now, on this one... On this one, this one's going to be extremely subjective. Um, to my mind, like, the immediate edge goes to, goes to one vision here. Uh, just because pretty much every class down there is custom. <laughs> so uh, you have uh, kind of interesting almost boss unit uh, level variations on all of your uh, all of your uh, units here. And the thing is, unlike the, uh, the standard official versions, it isn't like, here is this thing, but it's a slight difference. We're talking about, like, straight up entire new classes uh, with interesting combat combinations, interesting mechanics, uh, and they're all basically hand-built uh, throughout the entire thing, so you'll usually see way more interesting combinations, uh, like those times when you actually see somebody going and, let's say, making use of, uh, like, a, a dagger sword build or something like that, uh, or making use of a skirmisher setup, or using a, a two different uh, types of blow darts or something. Um, like, all of them are hand-built, so you feel that pretty darn well. Um, second place for that, I feel like, probably has to go... Actually... Okay, there's a bit of an unfair thing for Final Fantasy Tactics here. Because it oftentimes uses kind of similar unit types, and oftentimes there's stuff that you might have seen before, and on top of that, there's just way less enemy types in general. <laughs> so this is probably going to go down in just a second. All right, next up, uh, let's see, as far as enemy coolness goes, uh, mm, okay, mm, okay, th I, I want to put Knight of Lotus higher on this list, but it definitely has almost, like, it literally has the exact same enemies every time you go there. They're very cool when you first see them, because it's like, oh, here's these people using set effects for the first time, holy crap, the AI knows how to use the Saint set, um, but yeah, there's like one map, so you're not really going to see much there. Uh, then, let's see, as far as PSP goes, it would be higher. I feel like in PSP, though, I have to put it down below FFT. Because as far as, as far as unit variety is concerned, sure, you'll see stuff that you normally won't see, and they're still going to be doing the same basic shit you've been seeing all game. So it gets to go down there. Uh, oh, wait, where, where the hell did I just... Oops. Uh, sorry, I accidentally did the thing with the button and the pressing. Um, okay, next up, uh, let's see, I'm probably gonna put Reborn up here. So probably about here-ish, give or take. Sorry, I'm accidentally hitting buttons, because, like, if you've ever used a Steam Deck before, uh, the right trackpad also can be a button press, and I'm pressing it a little too hard, and that's my bad. Anyway, so, as far as, uh, enemy variety, right? So I feel like in Reborn, the main difference between it and PSP is you typically will see more enemy variety actually mattering in terms of their useful skills actually going off. So like, you'd see, like, let's say, Hoplites, Juggernauts, or whatever else with their particular skills over in PSP, and they usually would never use them because they're crazy expensive and unlikely to hit and whatever else. In Reborn, you're just kind of seeing the stuff that they were doing in the first place, so... That gets to go there. I feel like that probably has to go in second place, just under OV here. And then finally, uh, we've got um, 
Uh, we've actually got, uh, what the hell's left? What did I miss? Oh yeah, Tactics Ogre Classic. Yeah, that thing's got, like, no enemy variety. <laughs> okay, actually, no, it, it's, it gets to go above KOL here, because it does technically have mission uh, enemy variety. It does have... It has interesting, like, little mini boss fights and stuff, but most of the time they're just the same old thing in a different color. So, on paper, it should be a bunch of new different types, but then also a huge chunk of the maps are just like, here is four lizard men. Here is, like, two lamias and two dragons. Here is four golden griffins. And it's like, what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> Are you just inventing random enemies for me to fight, or what? Um, actually, one more thing I forgot to mention earlier. So, going back to the Back by Midnight category, uh, there is one in particular that I wanted to shout out here that will not be joining in any of the other categories, which is the absolutely deplorable uh, state of things that happens in the Japanese version of Tactics Ogre PSP. Um, for those that have never played it, <sighs> don't do Palace of the Dead in that version. Um, basically, it is the slowest goddamn thing you will ever see. See, its AI is, on paper, smarter. Now, what does this mean? It means that it loves its buffs and debuffs. So, um, actually, come to think of it, oh, hot damn, hold on, hold on, hold on, no, 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 I just remembered trauma just happened. No, okay, sorry, taking back the thing about speed from before. Tactics Ogre PSP, right? You will be there for probably longer than any of the other versions, not because of the fact that you can't uh, one-shot stuff across the map, but because of the damn resonance animation. Um, okay, so the one version of the Tactics Ogre J uh, Japan version that we got in the US release was the resonance. Now, the reason that this is funny is because dragons will pop out a resonance ability every time that they have the TP to do so. This means that they usually won't be attacking anything, which means that realistically you can just poison them and wait for them to die on their own because they'll be spending all of their points on going and doing a buff that does nothing to them uh, and just simply die of poison rather than attacking you. Now, the thing that's annoying about this is that it's like a 15 second long animation and then you've got entire maps that are nothing but dragons. This is why people saw uh, saw Dragon Scale and thought it was invented for Reborn uh, when they were going through Palace of the Dead, because back in the original, you never saw them use Dragon Scale, you never saw them use their, uh, their Tail Whip most of the time, or their Breath Moves, because they were so busy resonating. Now, the especially funny part about this is that they would, um, is that the, the buff doesn't do anything to them. In one vision, it does. It buffs them. It gives them an actual elemental buff, and it's something that you'll see uh, them instilling every now and then. When it comes to the PSP version, all it does is has a 30% chance to inflict a verse on uh, on your guys, um, and potentially buff allies, but they're never nearby allies, and most of the time the dragon maps are just dragons, so they don't have a weapon to apply the buff to, meaning it doesn't do anything outside of boosting the, um, uh, the uh, natural tendency of the map, so the uh, prevailing element system which A, will not matter for them whatsoever, they can't really benefit from it, and B, they're all different elements, so what's it doing? Um, so yeah, it was one of the most irritating things about that version. I think my brain just, like, memory hold it for a minute until the Japanese version reminded me. So the Japanese version takes this one step further. <laughs> Because in that one, every AI is like this, in which they will buff or debuff whether or not it makes any sense for, the, uh, for them to do so. It's actually likely the reason that we never see Healcraft or any of the other buffs being used in Reborn. Uh, because that was a change that started from the Japanese version going to going stateside, uh, because they would constantly buff themselves. And I mean like Warlocks, right? Warlocks in the mid game, starting off with the ability to give people Healcraft. Now think about this for a second. It's a, it's like a 15% boost to healing, which does not scale. So you're getting a few extra points of healing, right? Now imagine if there's, let's say, a, a, a castle fight, and there happens to be a warlock there that happens to have that particular buff. And now there's three ninjas that are survive, uh, surrounding them at all times. They cannot use that buff whatsoever, but this guy will stay there every single solitary turn and give them that buff, going through the lengthy draconic animation every time to go give these ninjas heal craft. Um, it's truly the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> so, yeah, that version's funny. Um, it basically plays the same as the PSP version. It's just absolute ass <laughs> to play through sometimes. <laughs> um... Like, most of the other stuff works the same. Uh, technically, everyone scales ten times higher than they do in the PSP version, which, 
yeah, it does make things hit harder, but they're also kind of bulkier to compensate. It's weird. Okay, let's go ahead and move on, shall we? Uh, from dunking on the PSP version as we do. All right, next is going to be Treat. And this is going to be when you are rewarded for the stuff that you do. Uh, I don't think there's any question as far as Reborn winning that particular one. Um, where the hell did I just drop Reborn at? Uh, I just disappeared Reborn, what gives? Uh... Right, here we go. Okay, so the reason that uh, RB gets to go up here um, is because it's got the potential to give you like four or five important drops per map going all the way down. Like, you are swimming in it uh, when it comes to Tor. Uh, yeah, a lot of them are going to be duplicates, and frankly, that's a good thing. Because, <laughs> again, we'll get back to PSP version in a minute. But like, yeah, you are definitely swimming in rewards, but you're getting stuff that you otherwise would have had a gigantic pain in the neck in getting a hold of, so far as I'm concerned, absolutely top tier there. Uh, next up on this list is going to be Knight of Lotus. Now, this thing, again, just loves to frickin' reward you. Um, if you win, you're guaranteed at least one. If you did a full team elimination, you're guaranteed at least three uh, from the random roll table. And this can be, like, imagine if Palace of the Dead was entirely one map, and you could just roll anything from that table. So you could just walk away with three relics or something for, like, a, a friggin' four-minute fight. Uh, so, very, very good stuff there. It even has, like, little time trial type stuff, so that's cool. Um, so, that gets to go there. Uh, next up on this pile is going to be One Vision, uh, which actually follows a similar rule set where you're always guaranteed to get at least one good thing per map. Um, and additionally, it will always spawn if, uh, if it's something that's a guaranteed spawn. So, like, so one thing we'll see, like, in, in like, Night of Lotus or something like that is that if a unit has a unique piece of equipment, even if they don't meet the requirements for it, they will equip it. Now, Knight of Lotus didn't have equipment requirements, uh, but this is something that One Vision kind of forced into the system. So, like, you'll see a guy that's running around with a sword that's ten times, you know, uh, ten levels above what they can use, and they're still using it just fine. It gives you a nice little mini boss fight, and you have a guaranteed drop out of it. So that's pretty cool there. Uh, next up on that particular pile is uh, going to be Tactics Ogre Classic, which has a similar version of the same rule, likely where that rule came from for One Vision. Um, so that gets to go right over here. Um, and that's going to, <laughs> that's going to uh, basically give you exactly one drop per map. You still see the occasional thing where you get nothing, but uh, for the most part, you're getting pretty good stuff there. Um, from there, uh, we have uh, the, old, uh, uh, the old Deep Dungeon here uh, for Final Fantasy Tactics. It's going to do great as far as giving you a good bit of stuff on your way down, but you kind of got to know where to look. It's got a lot of goodies in there. It's not too difficult to memorize the spots where they're located, um, but uh, if you aren't there with a guide, it can be a bit frustrating. So we'll go ahead and put that there. And then finally, on the bottom of the pile, to absolutely nobody's surprise, is Tactics Ogre PSP. It wanted you to grind. It expected you to grind. We're talking MMO-level drop rates, uh, where something has, like, a less than 5% chance to drop on one random enemy that only spawns once, some of the time, maybe, on one map in a 115-floor dungeon. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you spend several hours and only wind up with a pair of shoes? Yeah. That's, uh, that's Tactics Ogre PSP. <laughs> Uh, that's just what it likes to do. Anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and move on to the final category, which is Trick, uh, a.k.a. Challenge. So, in terms of Challenge... Oh, I just noticed I can actually probably just do, do it this way instead. It's way more zoomy. One Vision wins this, no questions asked. Um, as far as challenging map design goes, as far as interesting party design goes, it feels like every, every map on the way down is like a let's say, player uh, playing you in multiplayer or something. Um, it feels very handcrafted all the frickin' way through. Um, I've been doing every single map in One Vision, and every single one of them has had something, uh, some kind of interesting gimmick or something to it, so beautifully done there, as expected. Um, okay, next up in terms of challenge, uh, I'm gonna put Deep Dungeon right uh, right next to that, uh, just because of the uh, kind of cool... Uh, uh, cool fights you got on the way down, stuff that you don't typically run into. Um, from there, uh, we'll move on to Tactics Ogre Reborn, which I feel is roughly on the same level, though I personally really appreciate the flow of it. Um, actually, I'm kind of tempted to put it up here. Like, I'm not going to put it up top because I appreciate the uh, the team design of One Vision a lot more, but there's something to be said about One Vision or uh, about Reborn's uh, kind of vibes, <laughs> as it were. Um, it's a weird thing to quantify, but like. 
as as you're going through, there's this constant, steady drum and flow as you're getting harder and harder and harder, and then it peaks around uh, the uh, around the 70s there, and then it finally just plateaus, and that's when you get your good equipment or a lot of your best equipment. Uh, that's when the uh, the difficulty kind of drops off a little bit, and it just feels like that moment that you've been going through this cramped cave, and you suddenly got to that big lake in the center with you know all the bioluminescent light and everything. Um, it's just it's a very like, sub-breaching the top of the water kind of feeling once you get there, you know? So I really appreciate that. Um, it, the individual fights uh, will vary. Uh, it's definitely way more interesting than it used to be. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the the, uh, the pacing of it is absolutely excellent. Um, okay. Uh, from there... Um, hmm. Let's see. It, the last three are kind of hard to rate. I'm going to put Knight of Lotus after, uh, after FFT for this one. Uh, just because the fight on your first time through is very unusual, it's stuff that you probably haven't run into before. Uh, from there, we've got, uh, uh, it's hard to say which one's... We're, we're gonna put, uh, Tactics Ogre PSP, uh, after that, I suppose. Because it's, it's challenge is weird. I know I constantly pick on a game that I absolutely love here. But, like, its challenge is very, very weird. If you went in with a completely normal team, it can be a nightmare of stun locks and endless debuffs and whatever else. And then if you played even, like, 2% optimally, it's just a boring cakewalk where you're one-shotting everything from a million miles away, you know? And it's weird how the lack of in-between there is so noticeable, you know? Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna put that right over there. And then, finally, we have the old... Uh, go forward and petrify everything <laughs> of uh, Tactics Ogre Classic. If you have Hobram in your team, congratulations, you've won Palace of the Dead. Um, even stuff that's well above your level, or stuff that's statistically meant to be super superior to you, oftentimes will just get one shot by Hobram and his Petrification Cloud. Um, yeah, it's weird how one unit can thoroughly dunk on the place so uh, so handily. On top of that, uh, if once you pick up a, a Star Ion, uh, it's... Like, you, you can kind of just nuke most of the maps. Uh, the main difficulty comes with uh, actually having some patience and waiting for your people to be revived after they got one shot by a gremlin. Um, so, yeah, it's a weird mix of just kind of annoying and tedious, so I'm going to put that down there for the challenge. So, overall, it's a nice little interesting uh, tie that came out between all of these. Uh, definitely, uh, you might notice a little bit of a skew against uh, Tactics Hunger PSP here. <laughs> That's not an accident. <laughs> um, it's Palace of the Dead uh, experience was uh, was pretty grim. And I'm wondering if we should maybe rate uh, the sort of equivalence of San Bronza for Christmas or something. I don't know. Anyways, so I just thought this was a fun little idea for Halloween. Uh, let me know what y'all think. And um, yeah, that's about that. So. Y'all take care, have a good one, and happy freaking Halloween! I hope uh, you either get lots of candy or tell lots of people to piss off at your door for demanding candy, and or do what we do, go to a million trunk or treats before Halloween, get everybody all loaded up, and then hand back that candy so that we don't have to, you know, spend more money on candy. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, happy spooky holiday and all of that, and y'all have yourselves a good one. Take care!